Hi guys, so kung naglik ka sa video na to, I'm sure na you're looking to upgrade your graphics card. Whether you're gaming, you're streaming, or gagamitin mo man to sa work. And don't worry, kasi for this episode, I will share with you kung ano yung mga recommended ko na graphics card to buy this January 2021. So again, this is part 3 of a ongoing GPU buyer's guide series na ginagawa ko. A quick recap lang, no? In case na miss mo yung first few videos natin for... Video number one is shinare ko kung ano yung mga different parts of your graphics card and kung ano yung mga kailangan mo i-consider doon. Second episode is more of the general terms na binabanggit natin or specs kung ano ba talaga ibig sabihin ng specs ng mga graphics card and kung ano ba yung mga importante doon sa mga yon. For the third episode, ire-recommend ko naman dito yung mga pwede mong gamitin based on your applications, kung gamer ka man, kung streamer ka man, depende sa budget mo and kung ano yung mga upcoming cards to watch out for. So, in case hindi ka pa nakakabili, of course, and uh, you're trying to wait it out kung ano yung mga ilalabas na bagong models ni NVIDIA, ni AMD, don't worry, I'll make sure to cover yung mga yon as well. So, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel so you won't miss out on future episodes. So, yung first batch natin, guys, is more of the beginner up to intermediate na use of the graphics cards. Yung masashare ko dito is more of the Adobe apps kasi yun yung personally na ginagamit ko like Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, Lightroom, and Adobe Audition. And I can vouch for NVIDIA cards for this one. I've used uh, AMD and actually yung kabilang rig ko dito is still using the RX 580 until now. But I really prefer yung NVIDIA graphics card kasi based on my experience, of course, extensive yung support ni NVIDIA sa CUDA programming nila. Ano ba yung CUDA na yun? So it's basically a programming model or programming platform na ginagamit ni NVIDIA on creative software. So sa madaling salita, ang ibig sabihin lang nun is si NVIDIA is closely working with Adobe developers to make sure na ma-minimize or walang issue dun sa mga graphics cards nila. So for this batch, tatlo yung recommended ko. One is the 1050 Ti, around mga 4,000 used. Ang brand new na to, I think is 6,000. It's a very very good card. In fact, uh, personally naging gamit ko rin to a couple of months last year. Yung next natin is the 1650 Super 4GB card. I know it's very small, 4GB lang siya. Pero kung talagang nasa budget ka, this is a good card. Yung performance niya is comparable to your RX 580. By the way, magkaiba guys yung 1650 dun sa 1650 Super. And I suggest you buy yung Super version kasi mas maganda yung specs no, mas maganda yung memory, mas maganda yung performance na, mas maganda yung mga clocks nya. Kasi yung price nila usually dikit lang. So just make sure you're buying the super variant. Tapos yung last card naman na recommended ko for this group is yung 1060 natin, 6GB variant. Okay, very careful lang kayo guys. For GTX 1060, dalawa yung version niya. Yung isa, 3GB, yung isa, 6GB. Mas konti yung VRAM nung 3GB of course and nakatdown din yung speed nun, yung performance nun, yung number of CUDA cores niya. Hindi siya sulat talaga. So just make sure na you're not buying the 3GB variant. Kung mag 3GB ka lang, just buy the 1650 Super or even the 1050 Ti, you're much much more better off kung yun yung pipiliin mo. So another advantage na tong 1060 6GB is of course, meron kong headroom na additional 2 more gigabytes of VRAM for future use. And yung price naman na to, wala na kasing brand new na to, it's an old card. Usually, you can have it for about 6 to 7K sa Facebook Marketplace. Ngayon, if you're curious, yung ganitong presyo, di ba 1050 Ti, 4,000, 1650 Super for 8K, tapos a used 1060, 6GB for about 6 to 7K, worth it ba to kahit yung tipong medyo nag-high-end editing na ako? I can assure you na you will be able to use these cards kahit tipong naka 4K na yung timeline mo. Just make sure that you use yung proxy and hindi mo tanta rin yung mga effects yan and it should be able to hold you over sa much more complicated projects. Ngayon yung 1066 GB variant, personally ginagamit ko to before kahit nagpo 4K editing na ako. Medyo hindi lang gan ganoon kabilis katulad ng mga bagong graphics card na yun. pero it should be able to still edit on 4K and even yung mga starter pa lang natin sa 3D should be able to use that. So in next group natin naman guys is more on advanced video editing and more of 
kung nagsa-start ka na mag 3D. For this one, dalawang cards yung recommend ko, which is one yung 1070 8GB VRAM natin. Tapos yung second naman natin is yung 1660 Super Variant. So bakit ko na-recommend yung 1070 8GB and bakit hindi yung 1070 Ti yung na-recommend ko? Actually, medyo dikit yung performance nila and if you overclock yung 1070 8GB using Afterburner na ituturo ko eventually sa mga succeeding episodes natin, you will get relatively the same performance as the 1070 Ti. Yung price na itong 1078 GB for the second hand market natin is around mga 8 to 9K. Yung 1070 Ti natin nagre-range from 12 up to 15K. So yun yung reason kung bakit gusto ko yung bilhin nyo is yung 1078 GB na VRAM natin. Yung regular 1070, not the Ti version. Now yung second card naman natin for this one is yung 1660 Super 6GB. I know, 6GB na siya. Medyo parang bitin, di ba? Tapos, ang price pa nito is around mga 12K. So, mas mahal siya ng konti kasi brand new siya. Mas mahal siya ng konti dun sa 10. 78GB na VRAM natin. Pero yung maganda naman sa kanya, not only you will be able to use this for complex video editing, but also for rendering. Kasi meron tong tinatawag natin na Turing encoder chip. So, meron siyang parang dedicated na GPU chip para lang mag-encode. So, yun din yung reason kung bakit maganda siya for gaming and streaming at the same time. Kasi parang yung isang chip nung graphics card is dedicated habang naglalaro ka. Tapos may nakiwalay pa siyang parang encoder para yun yung bahala dun sa streams mo. Okay, so puros NVIDIA na lang, no? Ano ba yung AMD na cards na marerecommend mo? So for AMD naman, if you really want to go with AMD, RX 580, 8GB version, plus yung 5700XT natin. So, ito yung sa tingin ko, ah, pinaka bang for buck na graphics card. By the way, yung RX 580, 8GB natin, usually you can buy this for about 7 8K, ganyan kayo lang easy PC. Pero ngayon, medyo tumataas kasi siya kasi mining. I-cover ko yan kung ano effect ng mining or cryptocurrency natin sa 2020 pricing ng graphics card for another episode. Yung second card for AMD naman is yung, of course, 5700 XT. This is one of the best graphics cards in the past 2 years na nilabas talaga ni AMD. And napaka-powerful naman talaga niya. Aside from games, maganda rin siyang pang mine. So, ituturo ko sa inyo kung ano yung basic ng mining. If you have a gaming rig or editor ka and gusto mong kumita ng extra mga 200 up to 400 pesos per day. Per day. Just using your computer. And wala kang gagawin. May open ka lang na program. I will upload a video dedicated to crypto mining soon. So, ang price naman ng 5700 XT is around 19k pag sale yung regular price ng ano ikita ko is 20 naman okay so nandito na tayo sa last part so for this part naman ano ba yung mga recommended ko medyo na sa mga may budget talaga mga pang high end rig dalawa lang yung graphics card na nirerecommend ko for this one first is yung 3060 Ti natin uh, personally ito yung ginagamit kong card bakit maganda for me yung 3060 Ti versus yung ibang cards like the 3070 3080 and 3090 sa Nvidia so reason number one is yung 3060 Ti is actually based on the same GPU module or yung chip kung saan ginawa si 3070. Kaya ang difference nila sa performance talaga napakaliit lang mga 6 to 7 percent. Kung marunong ka mag overclock, you can match the 3070 performance using your 3060 Ti. Ano ba yung isang reason kung bakit ko napili? Kasi parehas lang sila ng VRAM memory bandwidth and yung, yung speed ng memory nila. So, parehas sa parehas lang yung dalawang card na to. Pero ang presyo, nagkakalayo for about mga 5 to 8K. So, ano yun ha? Comparing same cards ng same brand. Yung 3060 Ti na MSI na kunwari, gaming trio versus yung 3070 MSI gaming trio din. So, ganun kalaking difference na 5 to 8K. I suggest na you save the 5 to 8K na yan, tapos just buy the 3060Ti variant. Ngayon, bakit hindi naman 3080? Kasi 10GB na VRAM yun. Masyadong mahal actually. Yung, yung jump ng price malaki. 3080 is a good performing card. Kaya lang problema sa kanya, masyadong maliit ang VRAM niya for what you're paying for for it. So for example, ang usual price nito is around mga 45,000. 
to about 50 or 60,000 depende sa model. So imagine from 28k to 45 parang hal- halos doble na yung naging markup or 50. Ba halos doble na yung naging jump ng budget mo pero you're not getting double the performance of, of course. If you really want the power uh, full powerful cards is get the 6800 XT from AMD. So, ito naman may nakikita ako. Kasi hindi siya ganun ka-popular as the 3000 series cards. But, this is a very very good card uh, with 16GB of VRAM. Talagang tingin ko, it will age well. Napaka-lakas na itong card na ito. Nakikipagsabayan talaga siya sa NVIDIA cards. Natatala lang talaga siya when it comes to specific application ng NVIDIA softwares like yung optics natin. Yun, talagang maganda yun yung program ni Nvidia for optics for 3D rendering and also for ray tracing DLSS kasi wala si 6800 XT nito pero kung hindi naman kasi lahat ng games may ray tracing and DLSS and kung yung mga nilalaro mo yung mga applications mo wala naman ng mga yon hindi naman nire-require yon I really suggest look into 6800 XT kasi not only it's much more powerful than the Nvidia cards for the same price mas marami pa siyang VRAM and Tingin ko yun talaga yung magiging uh, batayan for parang future proofing ng card na to. It will really age well. Kasi 10 gigabytes of VRAM for 2021 moving forward is just not enough guys. So I really suggest na you move away from those SKUs ni Nvidia. Ang maganda pa dyan kung talagang ayaw mo rin mag AMD naman ng 6800 XT. Pero ayaw mo rin ng 10 gigabytes ni 3080 Antayin mo yung 3080 Ti ni Nvidia which is 20 gigabytes of VRAM but of course ang problema mo noon is yung mga cards nga na ni-launch for a few months na ang hirap makakuha ng stock so how much more yung hindi pa nga officially nila ina-acknowledge na nasa market na so depende sa yun but if you're interested to know kung ano yung mga performance and i-cover ko yan lahat for this channel so just make sure that you like this video and subscribe para you won't miss out on future episodes so thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one